Hi, everyone, and welcome to week four of the course Entrepreneurship for Youth. My name is Kim, and I'm the Education Manager at Canada. When you have a good idea or have just started your company, your business, it's important to be able to convince each other about the quality of your idea. With us today, we're so fortunate to have Karina Brix, who's a pitch expert. She is going to talk to us about how you can best pitch your idea to businesses and investors. But before we go ahead and start the lecture, I just have a good piece of news that I would like to share with you. Cannabis Lab has been nominated for Best Social Tech Startup in the Nordic Startup Awards. And I would encourage you to go to our website uh, or to our Facebook page, Cannabis Lab Students, and find the competition and give us a vote. We would very much appreciate that. So moving on to the lecture, I'll encourage all of you to ask the questions throughout the lecture. You can use our Q&A feature to do that. And I'll also encourage you to go ahead and introduce yourself so that Karina can get an idea of who's here today. But let's move on and start the lecture. So Karina, thank you so much for being here today. Yes. And welcome to the Cannabis Lab platform. Yeah. Um, why don't you just uh, go ahead and, and start your your talk, and maybe start by introducing yourself a bit more. Yep. Um, actually, I will go to just go straight forward, and then we, I will introduce myself later on. But um, I will start with a little thought experiment. Imagine that you press the button for the elevator and the door opens and there stands the guy, you know, the guy who can actually invest in your idea and make your idea come into reality. But it is very easy and you only have like a few flaws to convince him that your idea is the idea that he has to invest in. But with a very well prepared pitch and the right tools, you will get his conviction right away. In today's society, as Kim already mentioned, we all know the importance of getting money and support for your product, your business, your idea, etc. So uh, let's get started. Um, and today I will give you some very effective tools on, on how to create a really, really awesome pitch. My name is uh, Karina and I've been working with uh, startups and been coaching several startups in how to get the idea into the world and stuff like that. And especially about the pitching style. So, because one thing is to have a really, really, really good idea. And another thing is to actually being able to speak about this idea and convince people that, that is a, your idea is the idea. So, what makes a good pitch? A good pitch is in the tension between being convincing selling and lecturing. There will be a huge difference in whether you are pitching in front of your potential customer or your bank or your dear uncle. So it might not be the smart thing to do for hand signs and being the gang's rep style if you are in front of your bank. But if your idea is about changing how we think about listening to rap music, hand signs might be just a feature for you. In other words, the style of your pitch and its message changing according to your audience and the situation. So when preparing your speech, try to think about this, what I call, I think Kim already sent it out for some of you, but I think about this as diamond, where like all the corners are interconnected. So this is what I call the salt diamond. We have, you have to think about the situation, you have to think about your audience, you have to think about the language, the topic, and the speaker. And all these corners are interconnected, so to speak. So the topic relates to the speaker and the speaker connects to the language and so on. So you might ask yourself, what do you want from your pitch? And what do your audience want from your pitch? How can I make my language addressing that kind of style and what is the importance of um, the topic to the situation and so on. Um, 
And you might ask yourself, is I think about this, uh, this salt diagram as if you're making like a stew. Uh, you have to spice it up with just the right amount of salt, not making it too salty and um, just balance the spice of it. Yeah. Uh, okay. So what is the best strategy when you are preparing a pitch? It's all about making your idea appealing. You have probably all heard about the three forms of appeals, uh, eaters, locus, and pathos. These are the very basic of a good argument and therefore also the very basic of a very good pitch. So why can't you just go up there and tell out your idea, show some slides and etc. Because you need to talk to both the brain, the heart and the reason. If you need actually to get people convinced and interested in what you're saying. So, ETHOS is all about your credibility as a speaker. You want to work not wise, nice and engage. So, this is all about your exper expert knowledge, so to say. But you can actually borrow ETHOS by mentioning in a well-known NGO, uh, referring to an expert and so on. Logos is facts, it's about appealing to your speaker's logical sense. So you can actually, you can maybe borrow some statistics to show this and this and this, but it's very important to only use relevant statistics. Um, and the last one, pages, that is actually a very, very powerful tool. This is what engages and touches your listeners. So we are not only rational machines, we are human beings and we respond to emotions. And remember there's almost, uh, always, always uh, emotions associated with the topic you are addressing. Uh, so you can actually use this to your advantage. But Paytas is really strong, so you have to balance it, so, so not being too pathetic, for example. And all explanation and research shows that a um, combination of all these three forms at once is works at its best. Yeah? Well, okay. This, imagine that this huge elephant is running just against you and you don't have very long time before it hits you. Uh, is it better to shoot a lot of loose powder shots or is it best, better to just lay it down in one solid shot? Yeah, you probably all think that the, it's better to just shoot a solid shot. And all science suggests that it is far more convincing to have one really strong argument than having like rather many semi-strong arguments. And so when pitching, you should be able to sell yourself or your idea in one phrase. So remember, less is more. I have seen so many people who explain that they're so afraid to seem unprofessional. So they try to use a lot of cool technical terms and phrases, but it can often be very difficult to actually understand the core of what you actually mean. So do the points clear at the outset of your pitch. And a good thing of doing so is to think of your main message and ask yourself, why am I trying to sell this idea? And then let everything you say support your main message and build your argument up from here. So cut to the case, like Mike Butcher said, cut the crap and get to the pain point. Yeah, let's move on. Um, okay, you probably all know the situation. We just say something that you believe this was like incredibly awesome. This was like insanely well formulated. It was right on point. And then there's this little critic in the background, you know? This little critic who says in the back and says all this kind of critical issues and just shooting down your idea. But it is these little critics that we must forestall. They must not put a lid on your good idea or your good business. So therefore, be prepared have a game, game plan for these critics and, and make as a go plan ahead for the possible criticism that could be. To do so, you can just bring up eventually matters yourself. So by doing so, you can actually vaccinate some of the critics that might be for your idea. 
but make sure to balance it because you do not want to create unnecessary confusion, you know. So don't only bring up the most prominent critical points, so to say. Okay. Okay. Now I have talked a lot about how to prepare your pitch. But one thing is to have like the perfect pitch prepared on the paper. Another thing is actually to um, present it. And this is why we have to speak about body language. Because everything you do, how you act, how you speak and how you move is forms of communication to your audience. It all affects your appeal forms and it all affects um, all affects your situation. So think about this when you present. There is a lot of good guidelines on this on the internet, uh, how to prepare your body and how to think about your body language. But I have figured out that especially one thing is really, really good. And I have really good experience with this when I have coached other startups. And it is a, it's a, merit, a method and a theory that call is grounding. And grounding is actually to, to ground yourself and make yourself less nervous when you're pitching. Um, so this grounding method is, imagine that you have to stand really, really solid on the ground. You have to place your feet solid on the ground. And then imagine there's a line from your head to the loft. And by doing so, you actually allow yourself to breathe. And it's really, really important to breathe properly because if you don't breathe properly, you can't speak properly and you're starting mumbling and all that kind of stuff. So staying grounding in the floor with your head up high. Yeah. And try to look up and try to be present. There's nothing more unconvincing than you can actually see that this person who is pitching is not in the moment. Um, yeah. And have, try to have an open language. Instead of sitting with your hands crossed, oh, it's good to be open and, and yeah, doing some galaxies and, and stuff like that. There's actually, have you, ever, have you ever heard of like TED Talks? There's this really, really cool TED Talk where they are focusing on people's body language and how it affected their performance at a job interview. So they place people in two groups. First, the first group was to have very close body language before the interview. So they were sitting like this and they didn't speak to anyone, like sitting in their own little world. And then group number two was like told to have this open body language and very high status related body positions. So they were sitting like with their arms open and were standing up tight and stuff like that. And guess who did the best performance at a job interview? Yay, group number two, because they were actually like, they actually prepared the body in a positive manner. And it actually, they, they were only told to do this kind of uh, body performance uh, two minutes before the job interview. So imagine if you actually do this for the whole day or just start to do it now. Yeah. Another thing is to try to speak slowly. It can be very, very hard when you're nervous. I know that volume of your voice and try to keep it like slowly and clearly. And again, be present and be aware, aware of the reactions of your audience. All of these may be some good pointers. Uh, remember to be yourself. Nothing seems more like implausible than and, and convincing than a person where you can just see that they are just having these assumed movements and this assumed accent. So rest in yourself um, and be aware of what you do well and what you don't do so well. And try to work, work on your strengths. So instead of saying, oh, I'm doing this and then wrong, I'm this, I'm doing really great and work on that stuff. To actually work on this body language, it is very good to start video recording yourself you start pitching in front of friends and family um, who can actually tell what your strengths are. Hmm? And I would say just try to be, make your body your partner and believe in yourself. Yeah. Okay. 
You probably all know the kind of type who just stand up at every event and just make people laugh, make them cry, and probably all think at one time. And we just say, oh my God, he is the born pitcher. But research actually shows there is no such thing as a born pitcher. So he, this guy who seems like he's naturally really good at this, he has just been practicing. And this is what my point is with, is that practice makes the master. So happily for the rest of us who is not, who not have this feature of like a naturally speaking pitching style, uh, that was a long word, <laughs> you can with the right tools become a world champion in pitching. Um, I actually want to work with a guy and he was like the biggest goof, sorry to say. And I was like, oh my God, will he ever learn how to pitch properly? And the thing is that he was so, he, he really, really wanted to, to start pitching really, really good. So at every event, at every chance, and every possibility he had, he just drew people like aside, random people, and he just started pitching in front of them. So he just practiced, 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 practiced. And he got really, really good at it. So, and what he actually said that he was not nervous about pitching because he just found it so exciting that people found it exciting to listen to him. And it was so fantastic that people just give him the chance to hear him out. So I will give you the advice to just enjoy it and speak, pitch in every opportunity you have because you more the pitch, the funnier it gets. Yeah. Um, so after today, uh, and with a lot of practice, um, I promise you that you will probably be as the natural born pitcher and able to come in even the major venture capitalism. So I will just introduce you some main points from what I've all been said, and I will actually give you um, what I have experienced as a really, really good basic structure on how to um, how to create your pitch. So first, the main point from today: uh, remember to address the situation and think about the salt diagram. Uh, appeal to your audience and keep it simple. Cut to the case and think. Go off and work with your language, uh, practice, practice, practice. And finally, believe in yourself and your idea. Okay, I will just give you this uh, structure or checklist when you start preparing a pitch. First of all, you have to be able to answer the questions of why. Why is this idea good? And how will you do it? And what is it good for? Okay, it's a three really, really good questions. The thing about it is that you are actually addressing your pitch from inside out instead of having it outside in. And research shows that it's much more better to have it from the inside out. Okay, a good base structure starts with an expression. Who are you? Who are the team? Why are you here? You can actually maybe tell a catchy story on what brought you together or something like that. Something that people remember you by. Second of all, introduce your idea and your objectives. So what is the idea um, and why are you doing it? Could be some really, really good questions. Uh, third of all, what is the problem, the opportunity, the pocket that you are addressing? What exactly is the problem? And what opportunities are you creating? And finally, the solution. You have to come up with some kind of solution. So now we know the problem. Now we know who you are. How does your idea solve the problem? Yeah, that was pretty much it. What I have for today. Thank you so much, you Karina. So much, Karina. Mm -hmm. um, um, it was, it uh, was great uh, to hear you talk about this area, and uh, hopefully, all of you. us are inspired to uh, to go out there and uh, and become better pitchers. Um, I hope so. Uh, I hope so too. Um, first of all, you showed us the uh, the salt diamond, uh, mm -hmm. and we send it uh, to people on on uh, the website. But could you just show us again, uh, just yep. so we, people haven't seen it? The handmade one here. Again. Yes. Can you speak? Meanwhile. 
Yeah, this is a salt diagram with the situation, the speaker, the topic, the language, and the audience. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Good uh, to have that. Um, so we have some questions here, but I'll just uh, yes. encourage all of you watching live uh, to go in ahead and, and ask more questions for Karina. Ask, ask the questions that you would like her to answer and that you think would uh, make you better at pitching. Um, so the first question we have here is, uh, I think is, uh, is most important, a good idea or a good pitch? Good question. Um, I think that a good pitch can actually, I think the most important is to, oh, that's a tricky one because if you have a good idea and you're not able to pitch it in a good way, the idea probably won't get the, cred, uh, the credit that it's worth. So I think it's very important to actually focus on the pitch. For example, myself, I'm about to start up my own uh, business right now. And what I do is that I use the tools from pitching to actually develop uh, what is this exactly idea that I'm about to make. Um, I once saw this uh, French girls, uh, French girl who were pitching and I didn't understand a word of what she was saying actually, but she was so good at it. She was really, really taking that scene with storm. So, I was convinced and I was like, what is this girl selling? Because I want to buy it. So um, I think it's really, really important to think about your pitch. So with that said, I think it, it's tricky to say it's most important, but it's really, really important to have a good pitch. Uh, thank you so much. I just, uh, I'll just uh, remind all of you how to turn on the Q&A uh, feature. I think I forgot that in the beginning. So in your top right corner of the screen, this small sign saying Q&A, and if you click on that, you can ask the questions uh, and introduce yourself uh, for Karina. So uh, go ahead and do that. And you can do that throughout the whole lecture. So we have another question. Um, sometimes when you pitch, you have a very specific group. Maybe you have a meeting with, with the group. And it is very easy or easier to point out the characteristics of this group. But what if you are at an event where you have a diverse crowd with, for instance, different businesses or different uh, investors, and you don't know how to specifically address this group? Um, how can you do that? Um, have you any thoughts on that? Um, what, what is the best approach to do? I think, first of all, it's really, really important to notice that you can your idea is not, I, I don't think it's very, very uh, hard to have an idea or pitch an idea that can address everybody at the same time. So if I were about to pitch to a very diverse kind of group event thing, I will probably point out what is my target group and who will I prefer to pitching in front of at the beginning. Um, otherwise, I think it's more convincing to actually target your pitch in some way. Um, but I think, I think a really important thing is to say if you want to make it like a lot of groups at the same time, I think it's very important to not talk about politics and some topics that can actually really divert the groups. Okay, uh, thank you for that uh, uh, question. Um, so we have a question here uh, mm -hmm. that is um, at what point developing uh, my idea should I start pitching it from the very beginning just do as much pitching you as you can do it all because I think it's the pitching or the pitching can be a really good tool for you to uh, practice your your way of and I think it can actually be a very good way of understanding what your business is and what are you going to do with this business or your idea because if you're pitching it in front of people and not like keeping it to yourself, you can actually get a lot of feedback out and you can get some, yes, a lot of feedback and some good uh, critics and constructive criticism on how to develop your business due to your pitch. So I would say just from start from day one, well, anyway, you feel ready for it. 
and I would like to follow up on that a bit. So if you if you go around from from go out and pitch from the start, and you have some bad experiences mm -hmm. with, then, then then how do you deal with that? Like if you're nervous, or do you think if, you, if you're nervous, or if the, the feedback you get is not mm -hmm. necessarily what you hoped for? So if you have a bad ah. experience, how do you turn that around to uh, to go out and 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 kind of like. Uh, you know, throw yourself into the pitching game again. Sure. I would start pitching in environments where I feel safe and where I don't feel that nervous at all. It can be very, 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 very hard to start pitching in front of a whole big group. So start in the small, small things. Maybe you can just start by pitching about yourself and then you can actually move on and developing your own security uh, in how to, to pitch and then you can start pitching about your idea and stuff like that. Um, when I've been, I've been with so many people who, who can't even pitch about themselves and I say, just start and like take some small steps and just develop from there. So maybe a good idea is just be start pitching about where do you grow up and uh, all kind of stuff and make some fun about it, you know? Instead of just telling the, the good old story about where you grew up, you can start Telling the fun matter or stuff like that, just developing your your pitching skill like slowly but safely. That uh, that leads me to another question that I would like to have answered mm -hmm. here. So, you talked about how you can include stories and storytelling into your pitch. And this is something yeah. I, I personally uh, enjoy very much when others mm -hmm. do. However, when I'm confronted with I have to do this myself and bringing. Uh, bring in a, a story uh, yeah. that's important. I find it very difficult what to choose. So, so could you weigh in on that? What do you think is important for a story to, to, to have when you use it in a pitch? Can it be too personal? Uh, how personal does it need to be? And, and, and what does it have to, to include? Um, I think once again, it's really important to think about the soul's diagram. So you have to think about what is my audience and what could be appealing to them? Does it have to be a funny story? Is it like, if, for example, if it's like some young people you're pitching in front of, it could maybe because you know, to bring in some fun stories about the teenage years or something like that. Um, but again, try not, not to make it too personal because sometimes it could be a little bit either pathetic or it could be like too emotional. Um, but you know, stories and stuff like that can be used in many ways. I once, I once saw this pitch, um, and it was about a guy who did something with apples or stuff like that. But he showed up in an apple costume, <laughs> and that was so much fun because you just remember that pitch. Um, you just remember the style. You just remember him and the idea because he had like some kind of feature, and that was his story, showing up in an apple costume. So I don't think you should worry that much. I I think stories is a good thing and metaphors is a really good thing. And the thing about using stories and metaphors is that it, it makes, it creates a picture in your audience heads. Um, you say, instead of saying, uh, you, can, you can use a lot of diff beautiful uh, metaphors. For example, myself, I always use metaphors because then you can actually, it's, it's, it's easier to understand something if you're speaking like in pictures and things that people are familiar with. Instead of like so I take uh I take language. Was that answer now? It was. Uh it was perfect. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Next question we have here is uh, around your business. What is what business is it uh you are starting? Uh, could you tell us about that business? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um it's really in the beginning steps of it. It's like uh, the baby steps uh, of it, but uh, surely said like kind of, yeah. Uh, so yeah, you can see, you just called me on that. I don't even have a pitch prepared for it yet. Uh, so that's embarrassing, but no, it's good. Um, the thing is that I have started. I my team, my partner, and I we just start actually addressing the question of and how and um, and what this that I can do this we actually put in front of each other. <laughs> so
So we have a good idea, a pitch down and say, this is why we do it. This is why we do it. But surely said it's like in creative consultants where we are trying to use benefits. We have, we both have a large network. So we are trying to use the benefits of using small mini experts and making some creative ideas of that. So I would love to present it for you when it's like further in the journey of it. Okay, thanks. Um, so talking about your personal experience, we have another question here. Um, yeah. What is your personal experience in pitching and how have you developed as a pitcher over time? And, and could you share some examples um, uh, about this? Yeah. I think uh, both in um, the type of person who just like throw my mouth at it. And oh. It seems that Karina just, uh, oh, she's back. I think. Let's just give her two seconds to see whether she's back. Karina, can you hear me? I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're back. Um, great to have you back. Sorry about that. Um, I think we had just a slight uh, problem with the internet. Um, but can you hear me now? Uh, yes, I, I, I think it works better now. Uh, could you try to... to... Karina? Okay, so I think uh, we'll just give Karina two seconds to see if, if, uh, if it works. Karina, can you hear me? Yes, uh, I can hear you now. Cool. Okay. Um... Okay, the question was um, my experience would be right. Uh, yeah, the, the, uh, the question, so backing a bit there, so I'll repeat the question. Uh, so the question was about yeah. your personal experience in pitching and how you have developed yeah. as a pitcher. Uh, could you take us through that kind of like process of development and, and share with us some of the, uh, the some ex examples of, of your experiences? Um, yeah, uh, I worked in a non-profit organization as a participant. Um, I was working at University of Copenhagen. It is, um, it is not that entrepreneurship minded or it's not that inwards minded. So my role Karina, can you hear me? Hi, Karina. Can you hear me? Hi, I'm so sorry about that. I don't know what's happening. No, that's uh, but but not uh, your problem. And and we're no. just there. Uh, uh, it seems to be working again. 
I'm I'm uh, sorry about that, but hopefully it will uh, okay. it will work now. Um, uh, yeah, will you will you continue the uh, the answer? I hear what you're saying though. Yeah. Karina, can you hear me? Two seconds. Let me just check whether we can can fix this. Hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, cool. Okay. Again, now it, it, it seems to be working. Let's hope that it does. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, I was talking about my. Spirit and I worked um, through my last poly work doing a lot of pitching workshops. I was working as a uh, you know, culture in that university. So, so I my job was like to do to like and uh, Hi everyone. So I can see that Karina just uh, there are some technical problems, meaning that Karina is not here all of the time. Um, until she's back, I'll just encourage you to continue to ask questions. Hopefully, we can we can solve this uh, situation. Um, Karina, I can see that you're back on on the screen. Can you hear me? Um, so I can understand that there's no sound for you out there. Uh, let me just take this uh, unfortunate little break to remind you that you can go to our Facebook uh, page, Cannabis Lab uh, Students, and you can go and vote for Cannabis Lab as uh, social tech startup in the uh, Nordic Startup Awards. We would appreciate that very much, um, Karina. Uh, are you back? And can you hear me? Yes, I hope so. Okay, let's uh, let's get let's let's not get carried away too fast, but let's hope that it, it it's working. Karina? Okay. Hi, Karina. Uh, you seem to be back. Is that correct?
I am sorry about that. Um, we are trying to uh, to fix this situation. Uh, give me just two seconds. So all of you watching right now, I'm sorry about this. We have some uh, technical difficulties uh, with the internet right now. Um, we'll just give Karina a, uh, a minute or two and see whether she can come back on to the Hangout. Um, and uh, hopefully we can continue uh, to get some answers about this topic. Uh, I'll uh, recommend you uh, to continue to ask your questions uh, in the Hangout um, or on, on the Facebook uh, page if you want to. And that way, if, say, should we not get Karina back uh, here, we can still hopefully um, get the, uh, the questions uh, answered uh, afterwards. Um, give me just uh, two seconds and I'll try to see if we can get her back. And uh, again, I'm sorry for this, uh, this uh, technical uh, problem. I, uh, I can understand that at least you can still see me. Um, that's anything at all. So uh, sorry about the situation. We'll just continue to stay here uh, and see if uh, Karina comes back to the uh, to the hangout. Um, right now it doesn't look too good, but let's see if, if we can um, and get it back. Hello. Hi, Karina. Hi. Welcome back. Is it working now? I hope so. Um, Thank you. <laughs> hopefully. I'm trying to work on the internet right now. I'm not the, I'm not the best at that, but I'm trying. Good. I, I, I hope, uh, I hope that it worked out. Um, since we would rather have you on the screen than than me in this situation. So, uh, so welcome back and let's see if we can continue. So she seemed to disappear again. Um, sorry about that.
once again i want to uh to apologize for this situation um which is unfortunate uh, i hope that we can get karina back and have her answer the uh the questions just in a minute but uh we'll just continue uh to wait um thank you so much for your patience um yeah So, as the situation is right now, it seems that Karina's internet uh, does not allow her to be online and talk to us about this, uh, this about, uh, your idea. We still have your questions, fortunately, and I will keep them. And hopefully we can have her answer them in another way. If she does not come back, we will stay here and see if she comes back. And hopefully, uh, she does. If so, we will cut this together afterwards so that you can get it and uh, and watch it again uh, on our YouTube channel. Uh, let me once again apologize for for this situation. Uh, unfortunate uh, as it is, um, I hope that we can still uh, get her answers uh, or get your answers. Uh, um, uh, get her to answer your questions. Sorry. About So uh, while we wait, I'll just uh, bring up some of the questions that we have here. Uh, so at least we get something uh, from the time where we're waiting uh, for those of you who are still with us. Um, and then maybe you can get inspired to, uh, to ask other questions or to think about uh, these questions yourself. Um, so, um, one of the questions that we have uh, here is uh, is uh, is about um, what a good pitch, uh, what makes a good pitch, uh, and whether it's also depending on the cultural context. Uh, so last week we talked a bit about with Oliver Anderson from TriMedics about the cultural context of starting your own business uh, and some of the things he mentioned was that it was important to take into account this context of whether you are in Europe, uh, Denmark specifically, or whether you are in Africa uh, or the United States. Uh, so it all depends on the context of what you are starting and where you are starting it. So this is a context, or this is a question about whether the context, the cultural context, is also important for putting together a good pitch. Um, one of the other questions we have is uh, what can one do while presenting if you know that your pitching is not going well? I think this is a really interesting question since I guess most of us uh, have tried and thought about uh, the situation where um, you have practiced a lot before, uh, maybe in front of a mirror, uh, you have uh, practiced in front of friends, with friends, and then when you find yourself on the stage in a situation that you're not used to then your your pitch or 
or your talk does not go the way that you that you thought it would. Um, so what do you do in that situation? Uh, great question. Um, we have another question here about when pitching, what is preferred? Having a PowerPoint or a Prezi? Having a printed business plan or go empty handed? So how can you actually prepare yourself? Uh, and and what are some of the things that you can bring with you to support you? Uh, I know that people sometimes uh, like to have um, a PowerPoint to, to, to support them. Uh, hopefully we can have Karina weigh in on, on whether that is a good idea when you're pitching. Um, I, I guess it depends on how long your pitch is and what is expected um, from it. Uh, let me just uh, take two seconds to see if we can get Karina back, which would be very much preferred. Uh, um, but if not, we'll just can continue. Can you hear me now? Hi, Karina. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> Once again. <laughs> Good to have you back. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Good. So um, I have been practicing uh, pitching uh, a bit here while you were gone. Are, are, are you still there? Yeah. Good. It's, it's so, better, better. Let's, uh, let's see if it works. Uh, so mm -hmm. let's start with the question here. I, I just summed up, up uh, some of the questions that were asked. Uh, for people to get uh, more curious uh, uh, or to inspire people to ask more questions. So the question here is, um, I'm curious if you think what makes a good, uh, what makes a good pitch uh, can also depend and can it also depend on the cultural context? That, if it's uh, the culture context? Yes, yes. Uh, let me just repeat it. What makes a good uh, pitch and and uh, can it also, or what makes a good pitch, can that also depend on cultural context? And, and that was also why I refer to the source diagram. I think that it's very important to see what is the policy for pitching, but I think there's some general rules that um, you should just consider when you're pitching. But with Okay, so I can understand that uh, we do not have uh, Karina with us uh, right now, and also I can see she's not here. Um, let's just again uh, hope that that she will be back. Uh, I just uh, I just have a screen here to check, so so I'll get input uh, on from the side. Um, so unfortunately, I don't think we will uh, we will have. It seems to be unstable, uh, so uh, we will just end it here, and uh, I'll have all of your questions, and hopefully, we can have Karina answer those questions uh, in another way. Um, sorry uh, about that. Uh, once again, uh, I apologize for this situation, and uh, hopefully, uh, that won't uh, that won't happen again. Um, thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you look forward to, uh, to our activity hour on Thursday. Um, thank you so much, and have a great evening.